This is your Libertarian Crusader show, episode number 43. And this time we have Blake Reuter with us. Hello. <laughs> and we're going to do a review of our summer review of the year 2020, which could have been probably the worst year in all of our lives. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure maybe we've, we've done well in ourselves, but speaking, I guess, historically, like every month there was always something, right? It's like this weird end of days bingo, bingo card. <laughs> this, you know, what else can happen next? And like the unthinkable does happen. I think this year shows that the average American is very weak and pretty much a pushover and won't stand up to any sort of tyranny. So it's the job of people like us to start to lead by example and stop being so soft spoken and so standing by the wayside stop being afraid to uh get in the arenas that it's like oh that's not libertarian to d take a stance on and just say what you need to say just quit quit uh being lazy get in there and do something right it's mostly talk about like uh is that a violation of the nap <laughs> <laughs> right uh, let's um, get into theory and uh talk high ideas rather than what we can do right now right. to change the situation these the people ground. they don't understand the nap they don't <clears throat> care they will take and destroy your life they will siphon your resources they will do they they will kill you they're not afraid so it's time to be done with this. Right. Uh, the nap would be is a relationship. Oh, that's how I always pointed out to people to remind them. It's not like uh, something you owe to anyone. It's something you owe to people who already are libertarians. You have a relationship with it and it's something that we share. Community members, <clears throat> right. somebody you could hold accountable. Right. Not like this blanket statement like, oh, everyone must be a libertarian. So, you know, therefore you should afford them the same kind of respect. I mean, to a certain degree, but not in like in this huge trust measure of a way that they will, could never hurt you or harm you or, um, you know, wait until you get hit first by them. Right. And that's kind of what's been happening. So 2020 though, like what, uh, how do we look at 2020 and we say the average person failed the test and you know, it, whether it was COVID, whether it was Black Lives Matter and rioting and, and violence, they allowed the narrative to shame them out of their positions. Uh, I didn't see enough, like personally, it was only a very few minority of people that would be willing to stand up against the lockdowns, for instance, most like your mainstream Republicans or anybody that is motivated by the mainstream media narrative, like it's been exposed that they will do, they will <clears throat> to no end to try to discredit everything. They will use Kentucky gun range footage to say, oh, you know, because we're withdrawing from this war, yeah. these people are getting slaughtered when it's a total lie. Like, it's it's over. Right. Right. And how can you salvage from that? Right. So you guys are saying that you guys are not going to get the uh, COVID vaccine? Is that what I'm hearing? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, no. I've said this before, and I still say it. I, I would only if Mel Gibson gets it. <laughs> He's the only person, he's the only stranger I trust right. that hates, like, like they even he made a movie, Conspiracy Theory, right? I feel like he gets some underrated stuff. film. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I think they should mail it out to everybody just like they mailed out all the ballots. And that way you can just trust me to decide whether I've taken it or not. Right. right. And then I'll just tell you that I took it. I think that's well, they want to give you a, a, an immunity passport which is a, a thing that, um, what country was it? France was going to do that. And the people got so pissed off about it that Macron's like, no, maybe we won't do the immunity passport. Cause they were going to make it like a prerequisite to travel outside of the country or to certain places like permanently. Mm. Well, this reinforces my point. Yeah. Look at what was going on in France, the gilets jaunes, the yellow vests. Those people were willing to turn cars over and everything when they were doing austerity measures, austerity measures and everything like that. Like what was going on in the U.S. when they were shutting down, com you know, total state economies and everything like that? We were he just saying, OK, thank right. you for your service. Thank you for your service. Right. <laughs> it's 15 days to slow the spread, 15 months to slow, 15 years 
indefinite. I, I think these people need this to feel useful, all right? Useful idiots and in a way government employees who are looking for a new promotion, another way to still get paid, you know, while you're not getting paid, right? Uh, you know, that's a weird thing about, uh, you know, in the beginning, I was concerned about it because I didn't know anything about it. And it's China. I don't trust anything from China. Right? I don't trust products from China. Uh, you know, and so it goes from there. I don't know what to expect. Um, but as time went on and people were not dropping like flies, it wasn't like a zombie apocalypse. Um, the mortality rate, uh, what is like 99.96 or something like that. Right. Yeah. We thought originally it was like, wow, it looks like 7% of the people who get this die. Right. And now it's like a tiny, tiny fraction of that. And it would have been quite legitimate to be like super concerned with a seven or 10% death rate, right. which is why in the beginning I was like kind of freaked out about it. Um, and then when they shut, you know, businesses down and stuff, then it puts you in this state of anxiety where you don't really know what you believe because you don't see anybody and you don't can't do any of your normal stuff. So it's like I remember times that I would just think, like, is any of this actually happening? Because I don't feel like I even see any of it. It's all just information out there, but I'm not really like seeing it. it took a long time for, for people to say, do you, does anyone know anyone? It took months, and then some, you know, some. Then finally, I know finally one person, right? So it's like it kind of crept in really slow, and it wasn't this like uh, damning impact that uh, I guess we thought it would be. And it's weird because you have. In the very beginning, even government agencies, CDC, were talking about, like, don't wear masks. Right? What are you doing? That's not going to yeah, save Fauci you. Fauci was like, you know, it's no, it's nothing. Right? It's, right. Doesn't, is it going to do anything? And it's weird because, like, masks it, I'm just like the opposite of what government says. So when the government says, don't worry, it's like, oh, I'm worried. <laughs> 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 but then when the government comes in, comes in now and says, oh no, be worried and shut down, it's like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> time to take, you know, go in the opposite direction. Kind of like uh, whatever the FBI has to say about that guy <laughs> who blew up in uh, Nashville or something like that. Whatever the story, I'm going to believe the opposite of that yeah right so you know i'm just a contrarian <laughs> well it was 5g apparently which uh, i find it hard to believe that that was the motivation for oh that. right those towers he was paranoid about 5g so he had to blow himself up right well that's a taint <clears throat> that's a t they're trying to taint a narrative and that's what they always do this is why i personally i just stop watching tv i stop i just tell people if they give me the tv narrative i just tell them i'm like look you're like talking to the tv you're brain dead sorry get away from me i'm not interested in you you cannot rub two brain cells together to get a, a self thought out so you're going along with somebody else's narrative i'm sorry get out of my way well the and the guy you know they'll point to something like that and they'll say ah he's a conspiracy theorist we need to clamp down on free speech to stop people from spreading these ideas and what's funny about that is they never say that about any of the things that the mainstream media or government spreads that gets hundreds of thousands of people killed. Well, they hate peer to peer networks of all types, right? Like it has to go through the FDA. It has to be proven to be safe. Right. It has They're, to go through the uh, Facebook fact checkers. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah it's important. <laughs> you know, they feign accountability and then they insulate themselves from it at the same time. Every time, same with the vaccines. This is what they always do. They, they put, push for it. They say everybody's got to get it. And then they have no liability for it when you, if anybody's injured from it, how does that make any sense to anyone? Right. I think, um, you know, all these people that are telling you to stay inside, you know, it's very easy when, if you have a remote job, <clears throat> it's very easy if you're a politician, you know, your income, you know, you're not getting docked from, from any of this, right? It's very easy for a lot of these people who are already, uh, you know, maybe on these uh, university uh, grants and, you know, uh, tax money to say the same thing. And not very easy for people who live paycheck by paycheck, you know, unfortunately, you know, that's, that's, that's a real thing for a lot of people. And now you have this weird place where a lot of people are now on unemployment insurance, like pretty much what a third, I don't, I don't know what, what the number would be, but it's a lot of people. Uh, my contractor who's uh, rebuilding my house, a tree fell in it, uh, said, you know, finding workers is kind of hard these days because they make more uh, just on unemployment than going back into work. And that's been kind of a, a delay and many rebuilding projects. So I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, the only way of course is this open the markets, right? Fight back. You know, you're talking about like, 
like this has shown who's strong and who are weak, right? Um, I'm actually surprised by Elon Musk. Uh, he's in a way an Iron Man this year and spitting in the face of the county and California and telling them I'm opening and I'm suing you. And if you want to arrest me, come find me. I'm right here. And then what did they do? They're like, well, we're not fighting against this multi-billionaire guy. It's like, we just passed the law and says, okay, you guys can open up your factory. <laughs> well, and I think we've been talking about this thread. We talked to Joel Salatin uh, in the middle of the year. And one of the questions I asked him is like, well, how do we get more people to that escape trajectory where government's afraid or people like it's afraid to mess with them because they can fight back, right? Joel Salatin started a food freedom foundation and uh, they basically like a legal fund, I think is what it is. So these are types of ways people can fight back and just don't come. <laughs> they're trying to use mandates and pretend that they're laws. They're trying to say, oh, this mandate, this government, uh, this executive order mm, forces you to abide by this when really only government workers have to abide by executive orders. Mm. Anybody that's a civilian, that's just a suggestion has to be legislated on and you're supposed to be able to hold your legislators accountable. I'm, I'm opposed to that. I don't think that that can ever happen unless you have a very local community that's government the theory. Oh, of course. <laughs> right. Like anything by secret ballot would be, uh, illegitimate. Like if you're not willing to stand behind your vote, if you're not willing to own up to it, I'm not interested in what you have to say because you're not being honest. But so I vote with my actions more than anything else. That's my personal opinion. Well, the secret ballot creates a lack of accountability. No principle. You know what I mean? So it, you can't prove that anybody ever voted for anybody at really at any point. So if some, if that person that, I don't know, you could bring something in like Hitler into it. Like but there's no thing, voter fraud. You don't, you know, of course not. <laughs> but like not you, widespread. You know, you can't ever hold any voters accountable for choosing, say, like a despotic murderous person or something like that. Because we don't know who actually voted for him. Mm. We do it every four years, though. <laughs> right, I mean, yeah. we choose a despotic murderer. <laughs> we choose. Years. We. Yeah, right. We all the together. People. But it's it. It is amazing. I mean, Trump was impeached this year, and a lot of people forget about that. And it was over um, a phone call. A uh, phone call. Right. The whole. Well, how dare you expose what we're right. doing? Right. Because well, they were going to impeach him anyway, well, regardless of he, they would find the reason. bureaucracy perceived him as posing their agenda in Ukraine uh, and or. The, yeah, Ukraine. And it's weird because, you know, these lifetime government employees get to uh, cause trouble for a president who tells them a different thing. But that was a conspiracy, you know, and there's so many. And it was a conspiracy theory on their part. Adam Schiff, et cetera, you know, got into it. And I think it's funny that that happened this year, that that's one of the least important things that's happened this year. You know, right. His son is finally being investigated, you know, after the elections, not when it matters, you know, not when uh, they've been sitting on the information and data, the FBI for quite a long time and not doing anything about it. Um, good for that guy to make an extra copy and put himself out there so he doesn't get Epstein. And I think that's, uh, you know, kind of brave on his part. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I guess we'll find out, you know, if he's still alive a year from now. But yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, ridiculous things that's kind of happened, kind of like, uh, like let's, let's discuss like some of these weird rules that they have here for code, for example, like you can, COVID has no danger to protests, right? Uh, that, that's a weird one. Well, it depends on left wing protests. protests. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> if you're protesting lockdowns, it is a super spreader event. Right. But if you are protesting against the whatever, you know, hetero patriarchy, capitalist, imperialist, whatever, then it doesn't. Right. They, they come in to make their mandates after they're done. And then if they see uh, anyone from the right coming out, it's like, okay, you know what? Time to put in some rules in place. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's happening right now in uh, D.C. Uh, you got this uh, Trump rally coming in on the 6th and the mayor is already like, close the hotels, close the restaurants. Well, look at Waco, right? Anytime a right wing 
anybody that's even remotely right wing wants to break away or do anything different. No, the government has to step in and, you know, stop it by executing a whole bunch of innocent people or whatever. But when it's a left wing one, oh, it's all good. You're going to throw bricks through windows and everything. Stop on people, you know, yep. or the Proud Boys. They destroyed they destroyed a banner or something that was out in front of a church. Uh, it was Black Lives Matter banner. OK, in D.C. And then that what has become the cause celebrate in in anticipation of January 6th. They're like, wow, we cannot let that happen again. Right. Act of hate. It's like, <laughs> meanwhile, the, the, we have a year full of destruction and violence. The, the city did not board up their windows and stores in anticipation of uh, right wing people coming out there. There's none of that. It's like, you know, this is going to be a chill kind of event. It's not like uh, they see these as a, they exhibit a pattern of behavior of leaving destruction in their wake. Right. When we had like here in Richmond, people were boarding up because of Black Lives Matters. Well, I can attest to this because two things. I, I lost my job in July, but I also was a person that boarded up some of the stores in Richmond and in D.C. And it was never it was always because of uh, these radical left wingers in the street. And I'd rather people be radical than not. But. You know, if you're going to start to destroy property, I'm sorry, like I'm going to defend it versus you. So it's and people are like, oh, oh, you value life more than property. I'm like, sorry, you put your life between me and my property. So, yes, I'm not going to be afraid to separate you from your life. Right. Yeah. Uh, you, some, you can't have a life without property. <laughs> you can't have a life without like uh, owning your own things. And a lot of these people, it's very easy for them to say, like, you know, burn this and destroy that. Because I think for the most part, they don't have much property to begin with. I think they've done a lot. They've made a lot of loser choices in life that are uh, have impacted them in a way that they can't look themselves in the mirror to say, like, maybe I should have done that. Maybe I should have got the degree. Maybe I should have, you know, taken a better skill. Maybe I shouldn't like, you know, masturbated to these kind of ridiculous topics and, you know, read all these dumb yeah. books. Anime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Australia's got it right. Humor. Banning anime. And I'm just saying, putting it out there. Uh, but I think when these people do come out with that, it's because they don't have much property to begin with. Right. So, you know, they're, you know, there's another argument could be made that maybe this is also a result of bad parenting. And, uh, you know, I mean, this is pretty much, um, it's convenience culture, right? It's a culmination of events, but really, uh, it's personal choice that comes down to it. And it's a lack of accountability, just like with most things. Uh, we, we live in a, culture of experts and people aren't well-rounded any longer. They're, they, they defer most of their daily things like, oh, food comes from the grocery store, uh, heat comes from the gas company, all of these things. They don't even understand, un unfortunately, like the first thing it takes to operate your life from a foundation, like the things that you need, your base staples. So until we start to go back to that yeoman's culture where everybody's kind of like producing themselves to a certain extent and then trade outwardly uh, it's gonna be a rough rough ride yeah these are people who don't really produce much and you know they don't really have much of an excuse because everything is online everything's a YouTube tutorial away uh, it's we live in the easiest time to learn things right but you know uh, right. it's it's an opportunity for people like us like when I was talking when we were talking interviewing your brother uh, smooth waters make for shitty sailors so if we're gonna have a, a, a rough ride like if us as people are solid and everything we could be a beacon and actually echo out our message and we should not be afraid any longer to take a stance because they're no holds bar. Like they are a full out assault on people like us. Well, the, um, you know, like the depression, uh, in the early 20th century, you know, and starting in 1929, it, it really was a different time because everybody had a much closer relationship to the farm or wherever, you know, more people lived on farms back then and more people had skills. And these days, if we were ever to face a economic catastrophe uh, like that, and people had to 
find ways to provide for themselves, I think we would have a much more difficult time. And uh, like that problem you're alluding to there, where the average person has no idea where their heat or food comes from, would be uh, a major issue. And uh, but yeah, we're. I mean, uh, there's a good guy, uh, James Wesley Rawls, who talks a lot about that sort of thing, you know, survivalism and things like that. And it's, uh, it's all, uh, you know, the just in time grocery store inventory system, for example, I mean, that makes it more difficult for, um, like when you see, when we saw this year with the, uh, toilet paper, not, not on the wall, you know, or in the shelves and things like that. It, it, you see that and it's like, it happens instantly. And, uh, I think the average person is, not going to do well. Well, they're not a critical thinker. They can't, they're unfortunately not good at finding solutions, right? Like, so there are, cause, uh, humans were tool makers. And if we can look at things, solutions based as people like us normally do, we're, you know, we're more self educated or self motivated to look for things. I mean, they're, <clears throat> In modern culture, it's easy to get fresh, clean water to your house, so you can get, do like a uh, add in a, a water line to your toilet and do an impromptu boudet or something. There are solutions, but most people aren't intuitive enough to think for themselves, and that way they wait for a government to step in or any sort of things like this and the community and the, you know, all sorts of things have been shaken to their core by the social distancing, the covering your face so that people can't tell your intentions or anything like that. It's, it's a full on assault. So they're not scared. Well, the, the, the mass thing you brought up, like not being able to see facial expressions and what a lot of people and a lot of parents are starting starting to be concerned about with their kids is especially if, like babies are not seeing nearly as, as many actual faces. And so facial recognition and understanding facial expressions is such a important part of social development that I don't know that uh, we're going to see the ef effects of this and what it actually does for a while. I mean, if the, if the masks stay around for a few more years with like they're saying, they're like, it's, it's a part of our life now that masks are I'm like, the new how normal. long are you planning to do that? You know, I am not hiding this beautiful stuff. face for <laughs> that long. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's a weird thing because like I see my niece who's like one year old, one and a half ish. So she was like born kind of right before all this stuff happened. And now she's growing up seeing people in masks all over the place. It's just like, you think about those kids, they did this whole thing about these orphans in Romania who were just sort of left in cribs and never really had any interaction with, yep. with anybody other, other than like changing this and that and the other. And they grew up incredibly socially. It's the archetype of being raised up. by wolves, right? They didn't have any, like mm -hmm. they were, it wasn't autism. It was like, there's some disorder of like Cold. being able to, yeah, they couldn't connect with anybody. They couldn't empathize with anybody nearly to the degree that a normal person could. Yeah. It's like, uh, they're not socialized in, in a way. Right. There's a lot of people who are like, you know, I'm just autistic. No, it just means you just have bad social skills. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people kind of just defer to that. So no, it just means that, uh, it wasn't developed. Your parents didn't teach you how to talk to people and, you know, teach you a lot more lessons that you needed to. And so you're, you know, you're, you're this way. Uh, there's no spectrum. Uh, you know, I don't think that's, uh, that's to be honest, a real thing. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, the effects of this would be interesting to see what happens from like these small little babies. Yeah. But we've already seen what's going to happen with a lot of these uh, older, um, uh, I guess, people in these political spheres, kind of like that journalist or whatnot who was caught masturbating on Zoom and didn't know how to turn it off. Tubin. Uh, tubin. <laughs> he was tubing. God, that was... He was, he was lit, full yeah. tubing. That's like, that's so... Well, I mean, let it, nature, you know, take its course. Well, and, it used to be called coomers, right? Like, but now it's tubins right. because, like, if you don't have enough self-discipline to wait till you're off a meeting, like, or just, like, don't. Just, like, be disciplined. Find a woman. Like, yeah. Have real interactions with people. Stop being a weak individual. Like right. Build something that would draw somebody in. Don't forget that the uh, 
I'm not Ju- saying it's easy, but the Jews use porn as psychological warfare against the Palestinians. You know, <laughs> it's a true fact. I'm just putting it yeah, out right. There. They pipe it in over like TV. Well, right. Like, they took over yeah. the signals and they were able to put it in there and in a way to kind of like, uh, distract and demoralize them in a way and not get them focused. And so, you know, that's kind of what it does. You know, it's weird. Cause I guess we were in, like in a generation where everything's very instant gratification in terms of like convenience you know, culture, man, right. like, 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 far from humanity from before we had televisions and like instant screens and stuff like that. And visual cues, infinity pool. Don't get lost in the infinity <laughs> pool. Right. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, even from that, uh, there's studies of effects from that. Um, so the effects from little babies not seeing faces. Yeah, that's going to be definitely weird. It's a weird, surreal way well, that they're trying to enforce. distance and be away. And there's always this. It's like, I feel like I, I brought it up on Facebook or somewhere the other day about how, like, effectively, like, dating is illegal. Right. I mean, in, in a way, not, I mean, they're not going to come like the stormtroopers are not going to come take you out of your t- right. Dating is going to be a weird thing. Cause so you meet a Except Tinder in Canada. Or, they will tell you go on a Tinder out. match and then uh, you don't see what her face looks like. Cause she's wearing a mask. Right. Yeah. It's going to be, uh, you know, the big reveal. It's a big red flag. I would think. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, I heard, she's, she's so beautiful. Right. Wow. Her eyes. <laughs> great right here. Yeah. They're trying to make the mouth, the new genitals. Right. So it has to be covered up it's and kind of Victorian in a sense like about, we right <laughs> yeah I don't take my direction from you know mandates and freaks that are in white lab coats or because North if, Northam who was partying out there in uh, Norfolk on Virginia Beach right well it's also mask. <laughs> it's it's the same as <laughs> these people are screeching about uh, trust the science and everything I'm like um, two-thirds of people would shock you to death if a person in a lab coat told them to do so. So I'm sorry. I'm just not, I have very little sympathy for people that are not willing to have a conversation, are not willing to at least relate to me in a human aspect and uh, are willing to kill me or snitch or call my, you know, call the police on me for having people to my house. So I have zero sympathy any longer. I have things I actually actually feel shame for like you know bombing brown people in the middle east i'm you cannot shame me because of having an immune system and understanding the basics of biology well and so this year this this uh covid story kind of made me think how would a libertarian uh, anarcho-capitalist agorist system address a pandemic and how, how, how would it be different? Especially if the pandemic was actually very serious, like not this one, not so much, you know, it's not as deadly. We can kind of predict who's going to have bad outcomes from it. So like, you mean like if it was really the seven, if it was the seven to 10%, they so have yeah. like maybe a uh, 50 Lynchensteins in this country. Right. No federal government. Uh, how do they interact with uh, a real pandemic of like a bubonic plague portions? I mean, I think at the end of the day, you'd have to leave it up to the individual to figure out what they want to do. I mean, if it really is something that's truly deadly and you're like, yeah. it's like, bring out your dead, like in the you know medieval not times, dead like, yet. people are not going <laughs> to question like, should I go to this party or should there be a party? I think it's going to be obvious right. to most people and those to whom it's not obvious. I mean, I hate to say it, but like nature kind of produces some people sometimes that are just never going to get the point for certain things and they'll end up killing themselves by accident or for some reason there's always people who do things that are stupid that end up killing themselves so there's going to be people who believe that it's some that the disease doesn't exist and we're going to have this big party and then some of them die I mean that's horrible but those things are going to happen there's nothing I can do to fix that I think the um, the answer is you let Japan be Japan and have control over their own army. Let them build the Gundams and let them conquer China. And with sponsored by insurance companies, right? Right here, here. Insurance, insurance, <laughs> insurance companies, right, would want to prevent you from dying because they'd have to pay out all these uh, death insurance. And so it'll bankrupt them, have an incentive then. You know, majority of all the bubonic plagues uh, originate from China. 
maybe ending the wet markets there and, uh, you know, bringing a good, uh, common sense, uh, cleaning skills or whatnot. It's, uh, what's needing out there. Stop celebrating this year of the dog where you eat like tens of thousands of dogs over a holiday weekend or something, you know, just frying there in open market. I would say, well, this is a good segue because the segue is I wanted to go into like, what are some positive things this year? Right. Okay. <laughs> and positive thing this year was, uh, I think hearing you, uh, ex uh exclaim at, uh, Anarchon that, you know what, Western civilization, you know, it's maybe it is the best. Uh, and I forgot what was it that you said that was a good convincing or thought. Was it that we don't eat our dogs and pets? <laughs> well, that definitely helps, but, uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> we'll be hungry soon. We'll probably need to do that <laughs> at some point. We live in a mostly clean society, so disease doesn't really take hold as much as what people think. And, uh, we live in a specialized society and that's okay. It makes the market nice, but, we definitely need to take hold. We have this ability with uh, modern technology to signal boost more than ever before. Mm -hmm. So the lower, you know, not necessarily the aristocracy, they don't have uh, such a stranglehold on the media or anything like that. We have these abilities to produce for ourselves like never before. I ended up picking up a 3D printer personally for my birthday. Thanks, mom. Um, and it's given me, given me the ability to up my personal productivity and increase my training. So I'm personally becoming a much harder target. So and it's made you know, the weak people be able to be really weak. So it won't be hard to chop them out of my way when the time comes. Right. These kinds of moments kind of, um, forces people, I guess, to be lazy or make smarter choices. Right. Uh, you know, when you don't have like their reliable source of, you know, maybe government income or whatnot, or, uh, kind of resources coming in, you know, you value your time more or you just refuse to, to, take it because even if people are encouraging you to do so, you're just like, nah, I'd rather not. Right. Um, like, uh, in terms of, uh, like I was thinking like another good news would be like Brexit happening, right? Like the process is finally finished. And Nigel, uh, was also talking about, what was this like? Farage is a, yeah. yeah. Brexit. He, was talking about like his next thing that he wants to focus on is, uh, the problem with China. Like you're talking about, like, there's great areas to boost an information signal. And Hong Kong definitely had that ability. Yet, I don't know, I haven't really kept up with them in the past like couple months, but like, have they been just conquered already? Is that, is that the end of Hong Kong's independence now? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, it, China could take it at any time they wanted to, really. I mean, it's a small, China it can do what it wants. It could, it could end North Korea at any moment if it wanted to as well. Not that it would have any incentive to do so because it's a fun little game, little toy that they have, um, to use as like sort of a poking stick to America. But you know, I, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. And I think it's, it's a difficult issue with, well, oh, they're so, they, they're so influential in the world economy, you know, China is. And, uh, I think that the solution will ultimately be that the average person needs to decide how much they value, you know, these goods from China versus, um, but I mean, personally, I, I don't see them as this, I, I don't see them as a, as big of a threat as like the U S government is in fomenting a conflict with them, mm. you know, it, like with Japan, you know, Japan is our ally now. And yet, uh, FDR ensured that we would be in conflict with them and we would have to go to war with them in world war two. Um, by uh, agreeing to um, what? Um, to cut off their oil. Right. Right. Cut off. Yeah. So Raise their bank assets. Yep. yep. So we and turn all over people. We created enemies. That we're living in the United States. So yeah, your own internal government's not above taking people and quarantining them in camps. So what are you will like? 
how are you going to make a community to be able to resist this? And most people aren't willing to go down that road. Most people aren't willing to talk about what it's going to take to, it doesn't seem like most people are interested in trying to resist what is happening. So mm, they need to get out of the way. It depends. I mean, it hasn't gotten bad enough for some people. I think some people have a much lower tolerance for this kind of thing. I mean, I know people who like are like, oh, well, I mean, it's just temporary. It's not a big deal. Like we're just trying to da 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 da. But I wonder how, what, yeah. for each person, when is that point where they're like, okay, when they hit bottom, I just, I tend to be an optimist myself. There's got to be some point at which at least the, I mean, I would like to believe the majority of people would realize like, okay, this has gone way too far now. Well, Jordan Peterson, he was kind of big in 2020. You have to ask yourself if in modern society, would you, or in Germany in World War II, would you have been a Nazi? And yes, most people would have been. I myself, I would have been. I was in the the military. So no doubt I would have been. But that also pushed me to the point where now I know that that is absolutely unacceptable. And it wasn't until I had that experience that I even knew that it was uh, something that I had to stand against. So I've abandoned the you can change it from the inside or anything like that. It has to be you have to change your own life. That is the only way you change your world. You've changed the world. At least it's been a really good pushback against some of this stuff. Against like now, Karen is a pejorative, <laughs> right? <laughs> All the Karens with that name, it's unfortunate. You know, some of them are like probably some good ones out there. It's like now they got to find a nickname, change their name legally. But it's also, I think, a red herring, right? Like they've co opted the internet culture and they've gotten so many th- people to spend man hours on the internet versus in- investing man hours in personal relationships and like fellowship with people they are trying to transition us to a fully digital society and it's important you use the digital to reach the local so that you can fellowship locally but also then echo out more broadly and get other people to try to reach locally also because right maybe this is um like they need a struggle, right? You know, America is so great. People are like sacrifice everything to come here or sneak in or try to make the cross shark infested waters from Cuba. But you know, when you get here, yeah, here more than anywhere else, you have an opportunity to make whatever you want of your life. And I guess, I guess you watch some of these Hollywood movies and struggles and strife and uh, something to make it worthwhile to you. And it's maybe people feel it's easier to feel like a victim and pretend you have a struggle, pretend you have, you know, adversity. And this opportunity that's happened with this uh, Chinese virus is like a way for them to feel like they're pushing through something difficult and kind of have like this woke woke, uh, sense of uh, achievement that they find lacking elsewhere. That national sacrifice, it's that getting back to like World War II when we're all going to, you know, work together and we're going to build the bombs and we're going to do the thing for our country. Not that, I mean, obviously World War II was a complicated thing, but like, you mean, but wait, history started yesterday. (laughs) People like that sense of I'm, I am standing up. It's like doing my, I'm a part of history. We're going to tell my grandchildren how we break the COVID pandemic of 19 or 2020 or whatever the hell it is, you know? Uh, yeah, it's sad. And then, uh, you know, we'll look back at uh, these kinds of stories, you know, here on these videos and people look back, oh, you know, there actually were a group of people who were like, yeah, uh, we saw through the lies and uh, we're able to take a stand against that. Uh, our open carry walk recently was a lot of fun. I uh, look forward to doing a lot more of that. Probably, we probably like the next thing to look forward to, like what do we look forward to in 2021? Uh, we got our lobby day coming up. Uh, there's this weird thing where people want to do this uh, gridlock system. And I said, go for it. But I think it's better for us to just do an open carry walk down there as uh, is our Virginian ritual annual one that they've been doing here for, for years. Six Semper Tyrannis. Uh, that, those words mean something. Cannot resist without arms and people. So 
people can screech, oh, why do you need an AR-15 to fight against government? They have drones, but uh, a drone is not going to keep a street corner. You know, if they're going to force me to resist them, look at what the people of Afghanistan have done, like the Pashtuns. If you're going to make me resist drone warfare, I'll live in a tunnel. I'm not scared. It's like the Vietnamese. People think that like it's just a matter of I have more weapons or more guns (laughs) than you do. And it's like warfare is I've never been in war, but I don't know enough to know that like warfare is a far more psychological thing in many cases and a small group of people with the right tactics can definitely prevail over a larger group with inferior tactics. Right. I think people on the right are, you know, play more call to duty games than people on the left. Right. I, I mean, I, even if they don't have no warfare experience, I think that does kind of count a little bit for something that's like virtual VR training all the time going in there. Right. I'm not a gamer, but I did play a lot of paintball as a kid because my dad was a world champion paintball player. Right. So I used to be on the field getting <laughs> shot in the neck <laughs> when I was eight years old. So I learned a little bit about that moment, but no, never, nothing did. Never yet. develop uh, uh, PTSD. Not from paintball. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe from grad school, but not from paintball. <laughs> I think we have um, this year's Anarchon. I think it's going to be a lot more uh, grander, bigger, you know, like it double the size from last year's. And uh, we have to start looking at what speakers to kind of bring up out there. Um, in terms of uh, like the size, we had 140 people. Right, that's a great success for was, 2020. It was a nice crowd. Yeah, <laughs> uh, fireworks that went on forever for for hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think some of the things to look forward to this year. I'm going to do uh, like the Spartan race. Uh, it's a Spartan race obstacle. And I want to go look into like, what, what are some positive things about 2021 we can look forward to? You know, I think the uh, riding, I guess that's, that ended now, right? You know, now that the election season's over um, and you can look at that. That's always been like an every four year thing. There's always been like a selection year, you know, there's always going to be a lot more BLM riding. I think this is the biggest one yet. You know, four year snow is probably going to get even bigger. You know, who knows? Um, you have like one of the largest spending of, or creation of federal dollars but at the same time you have like cryptocurrencies are skyrocketing again the most gun you know purchases of any year ever um of all year people like people that were old hats in the firearms community transitioning from ever buying firearms to just like making your own um people taking on ownership of creating ammo themselves people looking at deficiencies in uh what's it like supply chains and finding solutions to these things 3d printing coming becoming a thing uh right yeah it's interesting because like my some of my church friends were uh like before the writing in conversation about guns like the first lobby day the gun day rally it's like you know we don't really need guns we'll just call the cops right and then you know throughout the year you find like you know they've seen that cops don't can't respond to everything or sometimes they won't and that's why you're on your own and then cops will enforce social distancing like how dare you go to church but that has that has swayed them uh to be gun enthusiasts now and we've been doing our gun ranges and they come out and shot uh shot with us at the range even the priests came out and shoot with us and more from that group has now gotten more guns like we went to that party john and yep. uh like yeah here's my new rifle here's my, my new guns and it's i think that is a good thing if anything like what well, the outcome of this is more guns and i think that's a great thing because this is a this is a rare country because i it used to be like you know your guns should be everywhere you know but it's not like people in france they're not really a gun culture and england you know, not the a, europeans th- think it's bizarre right. but why are the Europeans actually resisting some of this stuff and none of the Americans are I think that a big portion of people are sheep here and won't but I want to echo like I went out to Kansas to do a work trip and my nephews first thing they're like oh queer, like look at my rifle we you know they put all the parts in it and they were so excited to show me and we do have a bit of a rifleman's culture but Nobody's willing to stand up and resist a, you know, a lot of these things. They're being shamed and you have to stop being allowed to be shamed into taking a stand. 
Right. And, you know, whatever happens uh, for 2021, continue to buy firearms, continue to stock up on ammunition. Right. And train. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Own host holsters. Get slings. Don't be the Missouri couple, the McCloskeys, right. and like <laughs> absolutely approach us. This great <laughs> Halloween costume, though. Well, you know? Absolutely, those they were amazing. But if they were to have a sling and they could have came out with both hands up and like, we don't want any problems. We just want you to get away from us. And he could have both hands up. And if they would have got like, if somebody would have draw down on him, he would have instantly been able to boom, to, boom, boom. Right. Yeah. If he had like, known what to do to kind of because it was a lack of training. Right? I think they just got. Those guns. It seems like they just got those guns like a week ago, right? And good on them. They just she got definitely. Yeah. They Big pulled those trigger. out of the box for the right. first time. Well, that, hers was not functional. That well, that is yeah, that is exactly right. Like that. the developments, but most people they only like uh, the the what is the quote that the the lie gets all the way around the world before the truth gets its boots on or whatever that quote. Is. Some people maybe their purpose in life is to be an example. And they're an example for why you should. And train. sometimes you're a bad example, right? Yeah, to be what a bad example is of gun training and etiquette, and right. So it behooves all the people to you know look into that more. Um, I want to ask then, I guess before we wrap up, uh, what are some of your New Year's resolutions, Blake? Well, <clears throat> I would say try to eat better. I would like to eat more like real food because I'm so busy all the time. Sometimes I'm like, you know, it's not. Ideal, like I need to network with people like uh, Joel Salatin more, and like buy from you know businesses and companies that reflect my values more than I do. So that's one thing. Uh, not stressing so much because it's like the whole the whole fabric of this whole system could come down at any moment, and so I just have to like be okay with with that you'll, you'll be with good friends here all together sharing that yeah. moment it's like if it happens it happens like well i'll turn the dance studio into a fortress or something you know we'll see <laughs> <Kerbakai>. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but yeah that's pretty much it just like keep my money out of um bad hands i guess but all reserve seeing, notes <laughs> well yeah that's true I'm, I'm getting more into bitcoin i'm trading a little bit and you know i used to do it more than i do now but I mean, I think that's kind of the silver lining of all this is that it's kind of accelerating things. It's a bit of an accelerationist time because, I mean, a lot of people are talking about civil war and this and that stuff that they would never have like thought was anything other than an extreme conspiracy theory 12 months ago. And now we're like looking at the president and they're still trying to pull something with like Pence might do this. Da, da, da. It's like <laughs> these po this political environment is completely new in our modern world, I think. And so I, right, I kind of like that it's breaking down because people are starting to understand the system more for what it is rather than the pomp and circumstance. Right. There's, there's like legit, uh, I mean, fake news articles, magazines talking about newspapers too, about like a civil war and boogaloo's and all that stuff. And they're, they're taking it kind of seriously, yeah. you know, uh, they even call it, um, uh, lamp from, uh, from Maryland, you know, a, a Boogalorian. Duncan Lemp. <laughs> Duncan Lemp, right. The cop that uh, shot him was recently exonerated of all right. culpability. We should so. get his, their parents or mother on the show next. Yeah. They're up here in Maryland, not that far. They, they're they not above killing you through your window in 4.30 in the morning. So if you're not willing to secure your own, uh, they're willing to take you out. So, right. What about you, John? My resolution uh, this year is to, uh, well, try to find a little more time, uh, try to scrounge, try to avoid the entangling uh, commitments that you don't necessarily. So that's why I'm quitting the show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, those, the, the, the things where it's like, wow, you know, uh, if blood in blood out, right. Uh, and, and focus hone in on the things that I've been putting off, like getting better at uh, marksmanship and, and whatnot. What about you, Kurt? <laughs> I've been on a pretty radical bend for a long time, but, uh, I'm going to stop shutting my mouth and I'm going to continue to speak up, keep doing what I'm doing, training, uh, networking, 
I, I like to hear what Blake said, you know, eating more local food. I butchered a bunch of chickens on the first day of the new year. Did Sick. you do it like grabbing by the neck and swinging it? No, we didn't break them. Uh, we put them in a funnel and we slit the throat and bled them out. Is that more humane than grabbing them by the neck? Well, as that's well? the thought, right? Like, cause the goal is to not make them suffer as much as possible. It's to like give them a good life until they are utilized for meat. Because I come from a land of industrial farming, like feedlots, stuff like this. And this was part of the, my reason I wanted to move out to here because I was driven by people like Joel Salatin or th these other folks that I met on their homestead. And they've inv invited me and my wife and allowed us to experience that. And they even are allowing us to make a range so we could do some training and uh, they've invited a fair amount of us to come visit. So I don't know, just continue networking and doing what I'm doing. Cause like Keep they're prospering. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to turn it down. So we have to figure out what we're going to do. Right. All they're about is just tearing things down. Right. Tearing this, tearing that down. Uh, nothing about building anything. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we have our friendships here and our network and our community to continue to build. Um, I think last year, my search, my, some of my New Year's resolution was like finding a range to go shoot on. We got Thomas De Silva now. Uh, we were able to shoot uh, several times last year. Uh, when I incorporate some of our uh, combat lifesaver skills um, that we did last time and just kind of yeah, continue being more lethal, continue being more capable on our own. Um, I'm best pressing a 225. I want to get a 275 this year. Um, I want to do the Spartan race up, up, up. I expect all of you to come join me on that. It's a great, <laughs> it sounds like it, mm. be fun. it is a lot of fun. It. Right, right. It's not like, like a mad dash. It's a team thing and 20 obstacle courses that we just get in there together. No one gets left behind, but it's a good experience to, uh, you know, and in a way like uh, navigate uh, obstacles. I might need life. to get on the Lance Armstrong <laughs> in order to get in preparation. It was like a boosting steroids in you right. or something. Correct. <laughs> and blood doping <laughs> as well. Yes. Uh, yeah. This year, my, those are my resolution is, uh, you know, build up on from last year. Um, I like to learn Latin this year. Um, the Catholic Church, the traditional Latin Mass I go to, uh, love to learn more of that. It's a, uh, it's weird because they say it's a dead language, but I, I, I hear it weekly now. So you know, it's uh, it's it's in the base of most languages. Like Spanish, understanding is kind of easy because I already know Spanish. But They're just trying to deter you from your culture, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think this year, you know, I think the most difficult year would have been 2020. I think 2021 would be a lot more easier is what I'm seeing. And, you know, we'll take it one month at a time this time. <laughs> we'll uh, see. Right. So for those watching, I uh, hope you enjoy the show. Uh, stay liberated. Get off my property. Print guns, not money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can say taxation is theft. Taxation is theft. <laughs> Awesome. Info. <laughs> God love you. <laughs>